Good morning, everybody. Good morning. <laughs> Good to have you here this morning. If you're a guest of ours, we want to say welcome to you. We're thankful that you're with us this morning. You'll, you'll see guests inside our bulletin. Hopefully you're able to grab a bulletin when you came in. We do have a guest information form. Please fill that out so we can know how to pray for you. Uh, at the end of the service, you can tear that off and put it in the boxes near the doors there. On the back side of that guest information form, we do have prayer request form there. And that's for anybody. Just write down your prayer request. And if you want the whole church body to be praying for that, you can go ahead and uh, fill that on there. Write that in the whole church body. If you want just the elders of the church to pray for you, then you can write that on there as well. Also, guests, we do have some uh, guest packets outside. Uh, if you have not been here before, you've never gotten one of these, it'll tell you a little bit about our church and who we are and what we believe. Those are outside. Mr. Phil Parker can help you with those. Other announcements. We will have membership classes starting here in January, so if you are interested in taking those classes, going through them, even if you're, just, you're not certain that this is where you'd want to land, uh, I'd encourage you to go through the membership class just to see a little bit more about who we are and what we believe. So just contact me. Let me know. Come by the office. You can. The contact information is on the bulletin there. Just contact me. And let me know if you're interested in membership classes. We have our book of the month that we're going to recommend to you. Um, Paul David Tripp. Many of you were doing the Come Let Us Adore Him um, Advent devotional throughout uh, Advent season. Well, Paul David Tripp has another one that's very helpful, New Morning Mercies, and it's a devotional, daily devotional throughout the whole year. And so if you're someone that would like to, again, now listen, supplement to your Bible reading. This does not replace your Bible reading. This is a supplement to your Bible reading. But if you'd like this, we do have some of these over in the library area, and we would recommend it to you. It is very good and helpful. Make sure, if you are here, guest or member, if you do not have access to Right Now Media, there's some very helpful things on Right Now Media. What that is, is kind of like, I think as one pastor put it, it's like a Netflix for Christians. And so there's a lot of things on there that are good. Some things that we would uh, encourage you to stay away from. But there are some really good things on there, sermons, things for kids. Um, we have, that's free to you. So if you are interested in getting signed up for Right Now Media... Um, let me know. You just give me your email address and I'll send you an invitation. And then you respond and it's free to you. And it's something that you can use at home. You can use it with your family for family devotions. And there's a lot of good things on there. Likewise, if uh, you are someone that likes to listen to the Bible. Now, again, you want to read the Bible. But also, listening to the Bible is a good thing. We do have the Dwell app. And that is also free to you. And some of our members use that and just listen to the Word of God throughout the day and as they're driving. And so if you're interested in that, that is also a free gift to you from our church. So come and let me know, and I will get you hooked up with Right Now Media and the Dwell app. And then, of course, we do have an app as a church. So you can go to the uh, app store on your phone and get type in our church. And we have an app that uploads the sermons and One Minute of Truth and different things happening. Uh, the prayer requests throughout the week, that all goes on the church app. So I would encourage you to take advantage of some of those things as you walk with Christ more. Last thing I have for you is we are members. Uh, we do have different areas of service in the church that we need starting the new year. So if you are thinking, you know what, I just need to, I need to serve more. Because most of you are thinking that. <laughs> and most of you are right. Some of you, maybe not. Some of you need to, to take a thing or two off your plate. But uh, if you're thinking, I need to serve a little bit more, come and talk with me or the other elders. We have some uh, ideas for you uh, with areas of service. All right, that is all the announcements that I have for you. Um, Miss Steedy, do I have any other announcements for people? That I, I don't have anything. Does that mean we need to stir up some No, we're, 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 we're resting after the, after the Christmas season. We're okay. We'll, take a, we'll just take a couple weeks. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. All right, can I have those who are reading Scripture uh, come forward, please, Mr. Jim, Mr. Ed? These brothers are going to read... Uh, one passage from the Old Testament, and then one passage from the New Testament, and Ed's going to pray for our time together. So if you would, please stand for the reading of God's Word. I'll start with Psalm 133, verses 1 through 3. Behold, how good and pleasant it is when brothers dwell in unity. It is like the precious oil on the head, running down on the beard, on the beard of Aaron, running down on the collar of his robes. It is like the dew of Hermon, which falls on the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord has commanded the blessing, life forevermore. <clears throat> and I'm reading out of 2 Corinthians 13, 11 through 14. Finally, brothers, rejoice. 
aim for restoration, comfort one another, agree with one another, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints greet you. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning, Lord. We're thankful to be once again able to gather together and worship and, and hear your word, Lord. We want to thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. Lord, you have truly been merciful, Lord. We ask that you just uh, be with Brother Billy today as he brings the word and the spirit, Lord. And we just ask, uh, as Paul said, that the, the grace and mercy of God and the love of will be with all of us today, Lord. These things we ask in your name. Amen. 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 What a blessing to see all of you here this morning. Well, let's start to worship our Lord with some singing.
Brother Furlan comes forward to lead us in our, our time of corporate prayer, I just want to uh, remind you if you haven't, or if you've heard, but if you haven't heard, there was a, an accident that happened and two uh, men went missing. And I just want to put that out there as something to be praying for their families. I know one, I believe, has been found. Mr. James, is that correct? One has been found. He's, he's passed away. And so they're still looking for the second one. But be praying for their families as well during this time and the, those who are searching and, and trying to find them. Thank you, Brother. Before we go on to our prayer time, I'd like to read the scripture. And he came out and went, and, would, and was his custom to the Mount of Olives. And the disciples followed him. And when he came to the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. And there appeared to him an angel from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. And his sweat became like great drops of blood falling down to the ground. And when he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping for sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Rise and pray that you may not enter into temptation. As I read that, I had to ask myself, have I been sleeping? We have this great gift of coming before our God and talking with Him uh, whenever we want. And uh, I don't think we realize that we need this. As we just seen, Christ Himself went to the Father and prayed. How much more then do we need this ourselves? Uh, as we go in this time of silent prayer, uh, we have up here a list uh, that you can help uh, direct prayer, you can pray through. And as we go through this, also lift up the families of these men that uh, went missing and the one that was lost. And just pray for the service. And as we start this new year out, uh, just pray and ask God to help strengthen you that prayer becomes the first thing we do when we wake up in the morning, and not the afterthought. And may we continue to pray all day. Let's go ahead and go into the time of silent prayer. <laughs> Most gracious and holy Father, we just bow before you. Dear Lord, we lift you up, for you're the only one worthy to be lifted up. Dear Lord, we just pray that you that you send your Spirit, the Holy Spirit here today to help minister and to help us in worshiping you. Dear Lord, may this whole worship service bring you glory and praise. May when we leave here, may we be more focused on you. Dear Lord, we lift up those that are on the list, those who may not know you. Dear Lord, may one of us or someone somehow they hear your word being spoken and that it ignites the life that only you can give and may they turn to you. Dear Lord, we pray for the island here. We pray for the witness that you would have us to be here. May we truly be the light that shines for you. Dear Lord, we lift up the rest of the service. Dear Lord, in our song, may we totally focus on you. 
and glorify you. And as Billy brings the message, may your words just melt into our hearts. May it just become part of us that as we go forth, that your word just spews from us, that we bring you glory in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, brother. Well, let's continue to worship our Lord. I think of the new year we have coming up. There's, there's only one re resolution for the Christian, and that's to know Jesus more. Amen? Amen. Amen.
the year that King Isaiah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim, each had six wings, with two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Amen. We have little ones to go that way.
they're heading that direction. <laughs> Let me encourage you to open up your Bibles to Romans chapter 16. Romans chapter 16. If you do not have a Bible, there should be some few Bibles in front of you. And it should be around page 950. 950. Romans chapter 16. Hopefully you're able to grab the notes when you came in. We will be using those some as we go through. Romans chapter 16. We've been away from the book of Romans for about a month or so, going through Advent and Christmas season. And now we'll return to the book of Romans. My hope is that today we will make it through verse 16. And next week we'll finish up the book of Romans, Lord willing. After that, we will see what the Lord has for us. It may be the book of Daniel, unless I get scared and try to go somewhere else. But it seems that we'll be in the book of Daniel, so I'd encourage you to start reading uh, Daniel if you have time to do so. Let me pray and ask for God's help before we jump into the text today. Our holy God, we do thank you that we can gather in this place this morning. And Lord, we know that we have brothers and sisters all around the world who are gathering today worshiping King Jesus. And so we pray for those gatherings, those congregations, those churches, Lord. We pray that you would protect them spiritually, Lord. We pray for those in high persecution areas that if it's your will, you protect them physically so they would be able to <laughs> worship today. Lord, we ask that you be with those proclaiming the word of God, that they would be faithful to the gospel. And I pray I would be faithful to the gospel and to the text. Holy Spirit, help us to understand this text today. Help me to be faithful to preach it. Help those listening to have ears to hear and eyes to see and hearts to believe the message Paul would have for us. As always, Lord, we pray for those who may be here who do not know you, and we pray that they would come to know you today. God be with us and teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Romans chapter 16. And we've been working through the book of Romans. I was uh, graciously reminded today by Miss Joni that uh, we have been a little over a year now in the book of Romans. She was letting me know that she's been coming for a little over a year, and so she was here when that happened. And I told her, well, you should have been here for John, because we were in that a lot longer. And she said, I love it. You can preach as much as you want, so ha <laughs> ha. She gave me permission. We have been in Romans for a little over a year, of course, taking some pauses here and there. And as we know that Paul's writing to the Christians in Rome... That would have been a, a mixture throughout the churches in Rome of Jews and Gentiles both. We're going to see that Paul now moves to a, a, a section that's really like a bunch of personal greetings. A bunch of names here. It makes us wonder, why in the world would the Lord preserve this to be a part of Holy Scripture? It is indeed inspired by the Holy Spirit, so it is the very Word of God, even though it's personal greetings. And my hope today is as we work through this passage and all these different names that we can find some things that are helpful for our church today. So follow along with me as we read through the first section here of Romans chapter 16. I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church at Sincrea, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints and help her in whatever she may need from you, for she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus, who risk their necks for my life, to whom not only I give thanks, but all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Greet also the church in their house. Greet my beloved Epinetus, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. Greet Mary, who has worked hard for you. Greet Andronicus and Junia, 
my kinsmen, my fellow prisoners. They are well known to the apostles, and they were in Christ before me. Greet Ampliatus, my beloved in the Lord. Greet Urbanus, our fellow worker in Christ, and my beloved Stachys. Verse 10. Greet Apelles, who is approved in Christ. Greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. Greet my kinsman, Herodian. Greet those in the Lord who belong to the family of Narcissus. Greet those workers in the Lord, Tryphenia and Tryphosa. Greet the beloved Perses, who has worked hard in the Lord. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord, also his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Greet Asyncritus, Phlegon, Hermes, Patrobus, Hermas, and the brothers who are with them. Greet Philologus, Philologus Julia, Nereus, and his sister, and Olympus, and all the saints who are with them. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the churches of Christ greet you. It's a lot of names. And you have no idea if I pronounce them correctly. <laughs> so as we read, we say them confidently, we say them boldly, right? Quickly. What's really cool, though, is you will meet all of them in heaven. They're part of those who've gone before us. And as Hebrews talks about, this great cloud of witnesses. And then you can go up and say, how do you say your name? <laughs> so I want to work through see some things that stand out to me with this section of why it's in the Word of God. So he starts off in verse 1. He says, I commend to you our sister Phoebe, a servant of the church in St. Korea. That word servant there, some of your Bibles will have a little number next to it because it will actually be the word for deacon. That's actually the word in Greek. So some, I'll just note here that some would argue that she was indeed a deacon. Some would translate a servant. That's what the, the word means. So those who are arguing for that in the church, that there are male and female deacons, if they are servants, if they have any role of authority, then they cannot be, uh, a woman cannot serve as a deacon according to Scripture. But if it is a purely servant role, then some churches, even other Baptist churches, will have female deacons or servants. This is part of the discussion. If you research that some more, you can dive in deeper. But what's the point here with our sister Phoebe? Well, she is a servant of the Lord. She is faithful of that particular church. So here's what he says. And many scholars believe that she's actually the one taking this letter to the church in Rome. They think that she's delivering that. Well, we don't know that for sure, but it's possible. So he says, obviously she's coming, so verse 2, that you may welcome her in the Lord in a way worthy of the saints. Notice that word being used again there, saints, about normal Christians. Do you know why that is? Of course you do, because I've told you for four years. It's because you are a saint if you're in Christ, because you have been given His righteousness. No, you are not a saint on your own. You are far from it. So am I. You're further. <laughs> no, 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 no. Not true. We all are hopeless apart from Christ, but we are saints because of His righteousness given to us by grace. So welcome our sister Phoebe and help her in whatever she may need from you. For she has been a patron of many and of myself as well. Phoebe is known for taking care of Christians. She is known for being a servant and faithful. And Paul says, the way Christians handle one another should be in such a way that nobody is in need. And when she comes, it should be in a way worthy of the saints. Friends, do we do that? Do we take care of Christian brothers and sisters and missionaries and others who come through our church and through our town? And do we love them well? and serve them in a way worthy of the saints of the Lord. I hope we do, and I think many of you do a good job there. So we see our sister Phoebe here. Now in verse 3, Greet Prisca and Aquila, my fellow workers in Christ Jesus. And he says they risked their necks for his life. And notice this, 
he gives thanks for them. And all the churches of the Gentiles give thanks as well. Well, why is that? Well, they come up a couple of times in Scripture. They seem to be church planters. They seem to be kind of sent out ones, missionaries, if you will, that Paul has been with at different times. So why are the churches thankful to God? Because they have worked. They have gone out and started churches and strengthened churches. Churches, And that's the role of those who are sent out, missionaries. Or as we talked about before, lower A case apostles, not capital A apostles, that office is closed. But the word that's used there means missionary, sent out ones. The churches are thankful for them. Notice all these churches, the Gentiles, know about them. Greet also the church in their house. Apparently there's a bunch of churches. Rome would have had a very large population at this time, and there were a bunch of churches throughout Rome. This letter is written to the believers in Rome. That means this letter was to go and go to the different churches. And many of those churches would have been in houses. Friends, do you know that many churches are in houses still to this day around the world? Friends, do you know that some of you will see the day probably in this country where we have to be in houses again? Are you ready for that? Are you personally ready to be able to break away if needed from the ability to gather in public property and be in house churches and secretly worshiping the Lord? That is happening all around the world. But what's interesting is the Lord strengthens his believers through that as well, and he purifies his church through that as well. It's not like, oh no, Satan's winning. Not. This is a win. Are you serious? This is a win. Gates of hell. Nothing can prevail against the church. His church reigns. He reigns. Period. Amen. It may look different. And a time is coming that it will look different here. We need to be ready for that. Greet my beloved Epinetus, who was the first convert to Christ in Asia. When he says that, he's talking about really all of that area in Turkey. We don't know a lot about him, but he's here and he's the first convert. But notice Paul says, greet him. Greet Mary. Which Mary? I don't know. Mary. They know who she is. Apparently, she has worked hard for them. There's a greeting here to Mary. Greet Andronicus and Junia. My kinsmen, Paul says, and fellow prisoners. They are known to the apostles or thought well of to the, by the apostles and were in Christ before me. Paul says, greet them as well, and they are his kinsmen and fellow prisoners. Friends, do you know that at this time many Christians would be put in prison? And do you know that they still are today? We forget about this. We had a good time on New Year's Eve, and we took some time to pray for those around the world. Ten different nations we prayed for, many of those who come and visit us from the University of Florida. Part of what we need to remember is it is normal for persecution to be there. You understand that? That's normal in the New Testament, it's normal throughout church history, and it's normal around the world for persecution to happen. What's been abnormal is the freedoms that we've had in the United States. But it's changing. Are you ready for that? Part of our job as church leaders is to prepare you for that, for when it does change. And that's okay. Because once again, Christ is on his throne. And the Spirit will strengthen you when the time comes. He will pull out the scriptures you have memorized when it's time, and you will be faithful to proclaim them. Because of his work in you. When he puts you in prison, when they put you in prison, you will have the Holy Spirit bring up scriptures and psalms, and you will sing like Paul and Silas to the glory of God, and people will go, that doesn't make sense. We've taken away their building. We've taken away their tax status. We've plundered them. we put them in prison, and they're still singing. Because our joy isn't based upon anything on this earth. Amen. Our joy is in Christ. Greet 
and Pleiades, my beloved in the Lord. Another person that we don't know much about, but Paul says, greet them, they are in the Lord. Urbanus, a fellow worker, that word worker again, probably a missionary of some sort, and his beloved Stachys. Apelles, who's improved, approved in Christ, don't miss that. And greet those who belong to the family of Aristobulus. In verse 11, he says, greet his kinsman Herodian. Do you see a word that keeps coming up over and over and over? Greet. 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 I'm going to get to that shortly. I just don't want you to miss it. I keep seeing words throughout this passage. Greet, 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 and work, and workers, and serving. We're going to get to those shortly. <laughs> He goes on, and, and again, he has other workers here in verse 12 who have worked hard in the Lord at the end of verse 12. Greet Rufus, chosen in the Lord. Also, his mother, who has been a mother to me as well. Many of you women in here, you need to realize that you are mothers in Christ to others, to those younger than you. Men, you're fathers in Christ to others. Yes, we're brothers and sisters. But like Paul has with Timoth T Timothy, this relationship, some of you have that. And you need to make the most of that. That's a gift from the Lord for you to pour into those who are younger than you. Likewise, those of you who are younger, where's your Paul? Where's your Rufus's mother in your life? That's the beauty of the church. All ethnicities can be together, all ages can be together, doesn't matter your economic background, all together because of Christ. If you don't have people like that in your life, then you need to go on the search. There's plenty of people here who would love to minister to you. Continues on in 15 to greet some more of these challenging names. And he gets specific to name them and their sister and all the saints who are with them. Again, another congregation probably in verse 15. And then he ends with greet one another with a holy kiss. And then all the churches of Christ greet you. So I have four observations about unity in this passage. I believe this passage is in here to help us see the unity of the body of Christ. Not just in our own little church, although it includes that but also unity among the universal church. There's the local church and the universal church. And many of you do not know anything about the universal church. Our brothers and sisters who we will spend eternity with, and we don't know much about what's going on around us. we got to do better. That's part of why we're praying for the nations, and we need to pray for other churches in the area and around the world. But four observations I have for you. The first one I have listed here for you is God's people work and they serve. Throughout this passage, people are mentioned who serve and work for others. If you do not work and you do not serve others, then are you really a follower of Christ? Ooh. You'll be known by your fruit. That's included in this church. Some of you, like I said before, you need to reevaluate things and see if you need to serve more in the church. And some of you need to. Some of you need to step back a little and rest. So. But it's serving all kinds of people. And it's not just this church, as you can see. Paul's talking about all these churches are being loved on and served by these people throughout this passage. Friends, work is not a bad thing. My generation and younger, listen carefully. Work is not a bad thing. It's a beautiful thing. It can become a bad thing if it becomes the most important thing. But it is a gift from the Lord. Adam and Eve were working in the garden before the fall even happened, so don't even try to play that that's part of the fall. The way work is, the toil, that's part of the fall. Work in itself is beautiful. And if you are a follower of Christ and you are lazy, it is a sin and you need to repent of it. We repent of those things, and we work hard unto the Lord. And re realize the pattern, too, in Scripture. Six days working, one day rest. 
Sun up, sun down for most of them. But some of you also need to hear me say, and a day of rest. It's a pattern in scripture. Some would hold to that it's something that we must follow, we must take the Sabbath. If you're in that camp, then you better be doing it. Others would say that it's a pattern of wisdom from the Lord. Either way, you should be resting. Some of you do not rest very well. And so then there's nothing left. You're getting empty. and You're not able to serve the Lord and serve others well because you're going and going and going and you need to rest. And when you don't, that is your pride and you're in sin. And you need to repent. You need to rest well. Some of you need to work better. Some of you need to rest well. Second point or observation that we have in this is Christianity is so much bigger than one church, is it not? Wow, he's talking all around here, all around Turkey, modern day Turkey, and Asia, over in Greece, Italy. He's talking, he's writing these letters, and notice how big the church is. It's so much bigger than us. We're a part of the whole. And so we need to do a good job praying for our brothers and sisters, serving our brothers and sisters as they come through our church, and realizing that it's bigger than just us. Number three, one of the most challenging passages in all of Scripture. You're like, what? Where? And I don't mean the names that we were reading, although that's challenging too. Verse 16, greet one another with a holy kiss. Here, think about that. How do you, what? He, he's not suggesting it, by the way. He's not suggesting, hey, you guys should do that. He's saying, do it. So it's a command. So how many of you have been greeting with the holy kiss? Some of us are like, you greet my wife with the holy kiss, I'm going to punch you. Okay. <laughs> Notice this greet, 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 greet. And now he's doing it with a holy kiss. What does he mean? I think the best way to understand this is whatever in your culture that is acceptable and is the most, kind of the closest form of greeting, that's what you should be doing. Mr. Roy, thank you so much. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while. He's like, I'm getting kissed this morning. I didn't even know it. Come over here. All right. Mr. Roy shows up for worship practice, and I'm here. And I see him come in. And I go, hey, good to see you, brother. Does that look like there's a lot of closeness going on there? Not as much. How about this one? Oh, Hey, Roy. Yeah, good to see you. Okay, good. good. Closeness? Not as much. Not in our culture, right? How about this one? Hey, brother. Yeah. yeah. There you are. There you okay. are. That's hey. it. Good to see you. Good to see you. Closeness? Again, depends on the... Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa. Hold on. Hold on. There's a closeness there. Now, maybe in a different culture that wouldn't be acceptable, right? You have to know the culture that you're in and what's acceptable. But here's the thing, and I think this is why this is in the text, is if every time my brother comes around and we're going in here, come on, and we're doing this, you know how hard it is to have issues against him? You know what I'm talking about. You have those people you don't want to even say hi to. And so you kind of avoid him, or you might do the handshake from a distance. Don't let Satan in here is what I'm saying. Don't let Satan in here. Get close, if that's socially acceptable, whatever's acceptable in your culture. You get close so you don't let Satan in there. This forces us, kind of like the reason we do the Lord's Supper every week. Part of it is to make sure that we're okay with one another. I've had some of you come to me, oh man, Lord's Supper again. I had to go and apologize to my wife. <laughs> Yeah, should have been doing that anyway, but that's part of what the Lord's Supper does. Greeting each other in an intimate way. Whatever is acceptable in your culture helps keep Satan out and division out. That's why... You can go now, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Yeah, you know what the holy kiss is real quick, by the way? Of course, you've seen it on television or whatever. You have one side, one side. We're not doing... That's not acceptable in our culture. We don't do it. Maybe ladies, you might do that. We don't do that as men, so we don't do that. keeps unity. 
That's what you're seeing in this passage is great unity among the church. And so Paul says to them, make sure you greet one another with a holy kiss and keep this unity in Christ. Last point. All of this unity that you see here is supernatural. You can't do this without Christ. Notice, I didn't, I didn't say it as we are going through, but many of you might have picked it out. If you look every time, just about every time he points to someone's name, he'll say, workers in Christ. They are in Christ. They were the first ones in Christ before me. They're beloved in Christ. In Christ, in Christ, in Christ. That's the only way you can have this kind of unity. The only way it exists. The only way that different ethnicities can come together and love one another and have unity. You can try every other program out there, including CRT. It will not work. Christ is what will bring us together, period. Different ages, it's Christ that will unite us. Different people, people who work, different political ideas. It's Christ, it's Christ, it's Christ. Don't try to build unity around anything else. It will not work. Christ is the one who unifies. Turn with me quickly to John chapter 17. John chapter 17, I want to end in this passage today. In this passage, we see this is known as Jesus' high priestly prayer. We get insight into Jesus' prayer for believers. I'm going to read through this passage as we end, and I'm going to just point out a few things as we go. I want you to hear your Lord Jesus' prayer for you on the night He was betrayed. John chapter 17. Some of this in your notes will pick up in verse 20, but I'm going to actually read from the beginning. John chapter 17, beginning verse 1. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you. What he means there is, it's time for me to die. It's time for me to be lifted up among all, drawing all men to myself as I die in the place of others in their sins. It's time for me to be crucified on that cross as a sacrifice. And then the hour is coming for him to be resurrected. That's kind of all together there, okay? Since you have given him authority, given the Son, the Father given the Son, authority over all flesh to give eternal life to all whom you have given him. You've given, the Father's given the Son authority to give eternal life to all those individuals that God has given them. And this is eternal life. Who? Oh, what's eternal life? To go to the streets of gold. No, not fully. To be up away from sin. Amen, but not fully. To not go to hell. Yeah, amen, we don't want that, but not fully. What is eternal life at its fullest? That they know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ whom you sent. That's eternal life. It's knowing God in Christ as you walk with Him on the streets of gold or anywhere else. Jesus says in verse 4, I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your own presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. When I was the eternal Son, the glory I had before, bring it back. Because remember, he emptied himself as that to come as a servant for us. Verse 6, I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. Yours they were, and you gave them to me. These are believers he's talking about here. And they have kept your word. Now they know that everything that you have given me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me. A lot of give and given here, gave. And they have received them and have come to know in truth that I came from you. And they have believed that you sent me. Verse 9. I am, watch this, I am praying for them. And I'm not praying, watch this, I'm not praying for the world. But I'm praying for those whom you have given me. For they are yours. This is a special prayer for all those who would come to faith in Christ that the Father has given to the Son. All mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. Christ is glorified in you. It's amazing. And I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you, Holy Father. Keep them in your name, which you have given me, that they may be, watch this, they may be one even as we are one. That's what he's praying. God, keep them. Keep them together. And keep them that they would be one. While I was with them, I kept them in your name, which you have given me, and I have guarded them 
And not one of them has been lost except the son of destruction that scripture might be fulfilled. Speaking of Judas. Jesus doesn't lose any of those the Father has given him, he says. There's only one that's been lost, and that was to fulfill scripture with Judas. But now I am coming to you. And these things I speak in the world that they may have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them your word. And the world has hated them because they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Christian, if you are not hated by this world, then you are not like Jesus. He's hated, we're hated. It's the way it goes. Stop trying to fit in. You're not supposed to. We live in it, we're not of it. We're supposed to be different. I do not ask, watch this, I don't ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. They are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them. Make them look more like me, Father. Sanctify them in the truth. Your word is truth. How do you look more like Jesus? The work of the Spirit in conjunction with the word. No shortcuts. The way you are sanctified in truth is through the word by the Spirit. As you sent me, watch this, as you sent me into the world, so I have sent them into the world. And for their sake I consecrate myself that they may also be sanctified in truth. Now watch this. This is verse 20, and this is important, because if not, you could read this passage and think he's only talking about the disciples, the apostles. Watch what he said, verse 20. I do not ask for these only, but also for those who will believe in me through their word. Going down from the apostles, down from the disciples, all the way to us today. That they will be, watch this, they will be one just as you, Father, are in me and I in you, that they also may be in us, so that, watch this, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. The way the world believes that Jesus has been sent by God is the unity that we have with one another. That supernatural unity that cannot exist any other way except the work of the Spirit by the Gospel, that unity tells the world Jesus is different. That unity tells the world Jesus is special. He's the Son of God. And so when they see our unity, they go, Wow, that's different. That's how they know that he's from God. When we fight and we disagree all the time, people go, I ain't going up there. I'm not going around there. Verse 22, the glory that you have given me, I have given to them, that they may be one even as we are one. I and them and you and me that they may be perfectly one so that the world may know that you sent me and I love them even as you love me. Father, I desire that they also, whom you have given me, may be with me where I am to see my glory that you have given me because you love me before the foundation of the world. O oh, righteous Father, even though the world does not know you, I know you and these know that you have sent me. I made known to them your name and I will continue to make it known that the love with which you have loved me may be in them, and I in them. That's your Lord Jesus' prayer before he leaves the earth. He prays for our unity. And let me tell you right now, Romans 16 is answers to that prayer. Think about it. Romans 16, what are we seeing throughout that whole passage? All this unity, that is answers to Jesus' prayer. When we are doing well in this church and we are unified, you know what that is? Answers to Jesus' prayer. But how about this? If Jesus is praying for unity, you think we can too? If that's his prayer, we have to be fighting for unity. But the way that you fight for it is you look to Christ and you look to the gospel. That's what unites us. Do not look anywhere else. Look to the gospel. Look to Christ as we go into the new year. Even with you guests that are with us, you are part of us in the universal body. Let's be more unified than ever as the church in such a way that the world goes, no, 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 we're trying to tear them apart. Satan trying to separate, isolate, and tear apart. And the world goes, oh, what? They're not separating. They're staying around this Jesus guy. He must be from God. Friends, don't forget it. Don't forget it. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Because you first loved us, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your gospel. That you would make us saints, you would give us your righteousness when we were your enemies and dead in our sins and trespasses, you would make us alive in Christ. And Lord, we're thankful, Jesus, that you would purchase us and you've not lost any of us. All that the Father has given you, you haven't lost one, except the one 
to fulfill the scriptures. Lord, we're thankful for the saints who've gone before us as Paul's writing them and that they were faithful to the end. And we pray, Lord, I pray that we here would be faithful to our last breath. That Holy Spirit, you would preserve us by your grace. Help us to walk with you. We know this is grace upon grace. We're saved by grace. We're preserved by grace. We know this, Lord, but we forget it. Help us, Lord. For those who are here who they they, they do not know you, Lord, help them to see right now the the unity and the love and, and to see Christ and that they would believe in him today. Lord, as we, we go from here, help us to be so united that the world understands that Jesus is from you, Father. Lord, help us to serve one another. Help us to love one another. Help us to greet one another. Lord, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. we take the Lord's Supper now, which is a great segue from where we just were. The warning that Paul gives, of course, in 1 Corinthians 11 is that we need to make sure that we check ourselves before we take the Lord's Supper. We need to make sure that God searches our hearts. So right now, this is a great time. If there are those that you have been having issues with and not unified with, let me encourage you to go to them before you take the Lord's Supper. If you're not able to go to them right now, then make sure that you've repented of that in your heart and make sure that you go to them to fix that before you take the Lord's Supper. If you're a believer, follower of Jesus, you're welcome. Even if you're a guest of ours, you're welcome to take the Lord's Supper with us. But if you are not a follower of Jesus, and let me encourage you, this is not for you. We are proclaiming the Lord's death. This is for those who are followers of Jesus. So if you're not a believer, that's okay. Just sit and observe. We're proclaiming his death. So go ahead and take a few minutes, friends. Go ahead and ask the Lord to search your hearts as we prepare this uh, for you. Okay? Take a few moments. As they were eating, he took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will no longer drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. After singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. So as we see his body that is broken for us, divided into two, we're eating from the, the same loaf. Some of you asked why we went away from the crackers and things. This is the idea, the body of Christ broken, and we're united, and we all come or are parts of that body. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the Lord's Supper, and you guys will come up first this direction and take it, and you guys over here start on this way. And come up row by row, and as you're waiting for your turn, feel free to read Scripture over the congregation as you come.
they shall never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. My Father who has given them to me is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. And I am the Father of And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Let's respond with the song. packets and uh, you can drop off your prayer requests everybody in those boxes if you feel led, led to give you can drop those off there as well we have bible study tonight 6 p.m talking more about what does it mean to have uh, biblical church membership and uh, what is preaching in the church supposed to look like we'll be talking about that tonight and uh, brother ray has a blessing for us before we go go ahead brother this is from first uh, peter blessed be the god and father of our lord jesus christ according to his great mercy he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Amen. Amen. Have a great day, everybody.